Throughout the inhabited world, in all times and under every circumstance, the myths of men have flourished, and they have been the living inspiration of whatever else may have appeared out of the activities of the human body and mind. Myth is a secret opening through which the inexhaustible energies of the cosmos pour into human cultural manifestation. The myth of Eden is a profound tale of deception and betrayal. The narrative is encoded with symbols and layers of subtext. And yet, it's a simple story, handed down for generations. But handed down from where? Is the myth of Eden inspired by yet older texts in an older culture? In order to find parallels between the Eden story and other stories, one only needs to look into Mesopotamian mythology. And here lies the myth of Adapa, the story of this legendary sage, a man who is endowed by his God with great wisdom and knowledge, but yet is denied immortality. What parallels can we find between the story of Eden and the story of Adapa? To begin, we must set the stage for what's to come, specifically who are the characters, and what's the setting? The tale of Adapa is preserved on cuneiform tablets and fragments that span a thousand years of time. Now that's a thousand years of this story being told and retold from one civilization to another. He, Adapa, possessed intelligence, his command like to command of Anu. He, the god of Ea, granted him a wide ear to reveal the destiny of the land. He granted him wisdom, but he did not grant him eternal life. In those days, in those years, the wise man of Eridu, Ea, had created him as chief among men, a wise man whose command none should oppose, the prudent, the most wise among the Anunnaki, was he, blameless of clean hands, anointed observer of the divine statutes. With the bakers of Eridu, he made bread, the food and the water of Eridu he made daily. With his clean hands he prepared the table, and without him the table was not cleared. The ship he steered, fishing and hunting for Eridu, he did. Then Adapa of Eridu, while Ea in the chamber upon the bed, Daily the closing of Eridu he attended to. Upon the pure dam, the new moon dam, he embarked upon the ship. The wind blew and his ship departed. With the oar, he steered his ship upon the broad sea. As we can see, Adapa, the man, the mortal, is a very important part of the city of Eridu. He's a fisherman. And in some variants of the story, particularly the one by Barossus and the Babylonica, Adapa is one of the seven sages of humanity known as the Abkayu. The 
The city of Eridu is a very important city when we look at Sumerian mythology. It is one of the oldest and the so-called home of the gods. It is the city where Adapa calls its home and his creator, Ea, also resides. Ea is the god of wisdom and knowledge and the water. He is the creator of Adapa. And along the pantheon, Anu is also a god, the supreme entity of the entire pantheon. He is the one at the very top, the sky god, the god of the wind. The south wind, when he had driven me to the house of my lord, I said, O south wind, on the way I shall to thee everything that thy wing will I break. As he spoke with his mouth, the wing of the south wind was broken. Seven days the south wind blew not upon the land. Anu called to his messenger, Yabrat, Why has the south wind not blown upon the land for seven days? His messenger, Yabrat, answered him, My lord, Adapa, the son of Ea, the wing of the south wind has broken. When Anu heard these words, he cried, Help! He ascended his throne. Let someone bring him. Likewise, Ea, who knows the heaven, he roused him. He caused him to wear with a mourning garment. He garbed him and gave him counsel, saying, Adapa, before the face of Anu, the king, thou art to go to heaven. When thou comest up and when thou approachest the door of Anu, at the door of Anu, Tammuz and Gashida are standing. They will see thee, they will ask thee, in our country, two gods have vanished. Therefore am I so. Who are the two gods who in the land have vanished? Tammuz and Geshida. They will look at one another and be astonished. Good words they will speak to Anu. And good countenance of Anu they will show thee. When thou standest before Anu, food of death they will set before thee. Eat not. Water of death they will set before thee. Drink not. Garments they will set before thee. Put them on. Oil they will set before thee. Anoint thyself. The counsel that I have given thee, forget not. The words which I have spoken, Hold fast. When Adapa went fishing and the south wind capsized his boat, thus tossing him into the sea, Adapa was furious at this. How is it possible for Adapa, a man, to affect the natural force of his words? Does this illustrate the use of magic? Is this part of an initiation into the realm of higher understanding where Adapa is being used by Ea for some unknown plan? The messenger of Anu came. Adapa has broken the wing of the south wind. Bring him before me. The road to heaven he made him take and to heaven he ascended. When he came to heaven, when he approached the door of Anu, at the door of Anu, Tammuz and Geshida are standing. When they saw him, Adapa, they cried, Sir, for whom dost thou so appear? Adapa, for whom art thou clad in the morning garment? In the country, two gods have vanished, 
Therefore am I clad in mourning garments. Who are the two gods who have vanished from the land? Tammuz and Geshida. They looked at one another and were astonished. When Adapa before Anu, the king, drew near, and Anu saw him, he cried, Come hither, Adapa. Why hast thou broken the wings of the south wind? Adapa answered Anu, My lord, for the house of my lord in the midst of the sea, I catch fish. The sea was like a mirror. The south wind blew and capsized me. To the house of my lord was I driven in the anger of my heart. I took heed. Tammuz and Gesida answered, Art thou to Anu? They speak. He calmed himself. His heart was. What parallels exist between the ancient city of Eridu and the biblical Eden? Eridu is said to be one of the five cities that existed before the Deluge, so its antiquity certainly aligns with the Eden narrative. Archaeological evidence shows that the earliest structures in the area date to the 6th millennium BC. The city reached a zenith during the 4th millennium BC and continued to be inhabited until around the 7th century BC. The idea of Eden doesn't originate with the Hebrew Bible, but in earlier Mesopotamia, the home of the ancient Sumerians, Babylonians, Akkadians, Assyrians, Kassites, and Hebrews, the name Eden is not Hebrew but originates in another Semitic language, Akkadian. Edenu or Eden means plain or uncultivated land. Why has Ea revealed to impure mankind the heart of heaven and earth? A heart has created within him, has made him a name. What can we do with him? Food of life bring him, that he may eat. Food of life they brought him, but he ate not. Water of life they brought him, but he drank not. Garments they brought him, he clothed himself. Oil they brought him, he anointed himself. Anu looked at him, he wondered at him. Come, Adapa, why hast thou not eaten, not drunken? Now thou shalt not live. Is this story verification of a deeper antiquity to the Eden narrative? Perhaps. There are certainly similar themes and messaging that are brought forth from the Adapa myth. It looks to be that multiple myths provided inspiration to the authors of the biblical narrative of the Garden of Eden, of Adam and Eve, and the fall of humanity from the realm of eternal life. Unlike Adam, Adapa was not the first human, but was said to be a model of humanity, a prototype detailing humanity's potential and character. Adapa's legacy that he passed to subsequent generations of mankind is not in the context of sin, but as an archetype of how humanity should live and conduct matters of everyday life. When Adapa enters heaven and stands before Anu, refusing the ambrosia and the nectar of the gods, he denies himself what only the gods may possess. 
Maybe we are meant to remember the fall in preparation for the next opportunity to reach beyond this realm into the world from which we've fallen.